Hello, my name is Hudson. And I'm Garo. And we're going to teach you how to get an A in 1441. The first thing you're going to want to do is to see if you can bribe your teacher. And if you can't, we're going to do this the hard way. So, if you succeed in bribing, you can stop the video now. Otherwise, continue on. The first rule of doing well in chemistry, or anything really, is to dress for success. Because if you look good, you'll feel good, and you'll do good, or you'll do well, depending on how much you care about grammar. Another important rule is to make sure you start early for your, to prepare for your chemistry test. This will also help you during those weeks when you have multiple tests for your other classes. Make sure you read the book before coming to class. This way, you have a basic understanding of what's going on, and you won't be bogged down by a ton of new details. By also reading the book, you'll be able to know which questions to ask your teacher over the concepts you didn't understand. Make sure you attend every class because you don't want to be one of these empty seats. And pay attention because just going to class does nothing. Make friends so that whenever you need help, you won't have to struggle alone. Additionally, after class, you'll probably want to read the class notes over again and work any similar corresponding problems in the online homework and from the end of the chapter problems in the book. This ensures that you'll be able to answer questions which have slight variations than those in the notes so you truly do understand the concepts and not just know how to work with one problem. When you're studying for chemistry, you got to eliminate all your distractions because it can be a hard subject to master. So we all know the phone can be a big distraction, so let's just throw that away. And uh, we all know Facebook doesn't do any of us any good when it comes to studying. So let's take this and throw this away too. And we all know that chemistry is way more important than biology, so let's throw that away as well. If all tests are available, make sure you work out all the problems in the test and make sure you can do all of them. And also, if you have struggled with any problems, you can always talk to your teacher and the chemistry clinic. Additionally, work out problems over again on the ones that you struggle with or missed the first time on the practice test. Besides just spending countless hours mind-numbingly studying over uh, your chemistry book, you can use utilize other resources that the campus has to offer. For example, you can go to the SI sessions that are uh, hosted by special SI instructors, which uh, SI stands for Supplemental Instructions, uh, and these instructors are handpicked by your professors because they know that they will help you do well in his, in his or her class. You can also utilize. Um, you can also make study groups with your friends to help uh, question each other and build upon each other's knowledge. Or you can, if you're a freshman, you can utilize the Start Strong Freshman Tutoring Program, which offers uh, free tutoring for uh, freshmen in many classes. Uh, and you can also utilize the Chemistry Clinic, which will probably be one of your best resources for doing well in the chemistry class. The Chemistry Clinic is located in Science Hall, room 318, and is home to many computers, different chemistry textbooks, as well as extremely valuable test banks. There are many people that come here to study together in order to help each other understand the lecture notes and the lab experiments. Also, the Chemistry Clinic has many tutors that will be happy to answer any and all questions you have about lecture and or lab. Chemistry Clinic is an invaluable resource that you should definitely take advantage of, even if you're not struggling in the class. One of the most important things you can do in uh, 1441 is do well in lab. In a typical lab day, you're going to turn in your pre-lab and your post-lab to your TA. Then, you're going to walk in and get safety goggles. <laughs> After putting them on, your TA will have a quiz for you. And you're going to work on the quiz for the first 10 minutes. Afterwards, you turn in the quiz, and your TA will go over what you're going to do in the lab for whatever experiment it is. And then you're going to actually conduct the experiment. Now, lab re represents 25% of your grade, which is the same amount as your final. Lab is actually a really good way to help your grade, but it's also a really easy way to drop it. So you're going to want to make sure you do really well in the pre-lab and post-lab. Those are the ones that you should almost always get 100. And if you ever have any questions, you can 
always ask your TA or go to the chemistry Some clinic for help. The quizzes, on the other hand, they're going to be the ones that hurt your grade the most. But if you keep current with what you have in class and you study the lab material before coming to class, there's no reason for you not to get consistently A's and B's on them. So overall, you don't want your lab to be the reason that you drop a grade level from a borderline grade. You want it to be the reason that it goes up a grade level. Remember, plan ahead, eliminate distractions, and use your resources such as the chemistry clinic, your book, and old practice tests. Finally, when you go into the test, don't stress. If you've taken the time to study, read your book, use the resources, you'll do fine. There's no need for you to have tests anxiety. Make sure you're familiar with everything you're going to use such as your calculator and you'll be fine. Remember, you don't always get the grade that you want. You get the grade you deserve. By studying well and following these techniques, you'll be able to get both.